This is Dominique Wilkins. Hey, this is Sean Kemp. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Paul Gasol. NBA fans, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean David. Hey folks, welcome back to the Basketball Time Machine. I'm your host, Sean David. Thanks for tuning in. Let's talk some old school NBA basketball. Now, in today's episode, I want to take a look at NBA legends, giving their opinion on how good Tony Kukoc, a.k.a. The Waiter, really was. But before we get to that, I want to give a quick shout out to A, the sponsor of today's video, which is going to be SimplySeattle.com. If you are a fan of the Seattle Supersonics, definitely check out the link in the description box below to get your autographed pieces of Sean Kemp and Gary Payton. And B, I want to give a quick shout out to, well, the Patreons of this episode. So thanks a lot, you guys, for supporting the show. As always, it's really appreciated. All right, enough said, you guys. Let's dive right into today's episode. back here at Chicago Stadium, and I'm joined by the Vice President of Basketball Operations for the Bulls, Mr. Jerry Krause. You have just returned from the European Championship, and the person you've been looking at is Tony Kukoc. Well, we certainly saw Tony uh, play uh, excellent basketball and become the, national, become the most valuable player in the European Championships, and we're looking forward to having him in Chicago. We certainly hope that we will next season, and uh, he's a great young man and a fine player. All right, so how are we going to approach this video? I would say let's not only listen to NBA legends giving their opinion on Tony Kukoc, but also let's mix it up with some highlights of the waiter. Let's start. Brought over Tony Kukoc when international players were few and far between in the league. Nicknamed the waiter, 6'10", shooting threes, came right in and won three championships with the Chicago Bulls. Scottie Pippen got into it with Phil Jackson because they didn't draw up the final play for him, drew it off a coup coach, and he made it. That's how good their squad was. They drew up the play for Tony Kukoc, who, keep in mind, had won three games at the buzzer for the Bulls this season. 1.8 to go. Here's what happened. 1.8 left. No timeouts left for the Bulls. Myers triggers an inbounds pass. Kukoc for the win. The Croatian sensation to the rescue. Now the next two clips that we're going to take a look at are from Steve Kerr. And one clip I actually really consider to be an NBA classic because, well, it has to be one of the coolest stories I've ever heard in my entire life. So let's have a look. All right, Steve. Well done. <laughs> I, just, you know, I know sushi. Whatever. Actually. Yeah, sushi. <laughs> no, I, I was like Kenny. I just, you know, pasta, chicken, whatever. But I'll tell you a quick story about Tony Kukoc that when he came over to the NBA, first game of the season, I asked him if he wanted to go grab a bite to eat. It's about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, kind of, you know, four hours before the game. And he orders this feast. I mean, salad, appetizer, huge plate of pasta, chicken, glass of red wine, a dessert like tiramisu, and then he follows it up with an espresso. And I'm, I'm just in awe. I'm sitting there looking at him like, Tony, this is, this is your pregame meal? He goes, in Europe, we eat a lot, we drink a little wine, we have espresso, we go ho back to hotel, take b****, then we go <laughs> 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 hey, All right, here we go. <laughs> oh, Man, was that, I allowed to say that? I gotta honestly say, I did not see that story going there. <laughs> that was awesome. I don't know why. <laughs> I thought he was gonna say, oh, we have a game tonight? <laughs> Wanted to ask you a couple of questions regarding your uh, playing days in the Chicago Bulls with uh, Tony Kukoc for our audience uh, on the website. Can you tell me the best experience that you had with Tony Kukoc? Yeah, I had a lot of good experiences with Tony. He was a great friend. Um, we went out all the time on the road and had dinner and uh, had a lot of fun. And of course, playing with him was great because uh, he was a, an amazing player, great passer. And uh, I got a lot of open shots uh, by playing with Tony. Was there one particular moment on the court 
that really stood out as far as either a pass or a shot where you were involved with him? Uh, there were so many of them, you know, playing in the finals uh, three years in a row. Tony had some great games in those finals games. And, uh, you know, he was so talented. He could go down on the, on the post and, and post up and score at the rim or shoot threes, handle the ball in transition. He was an incredibly talented player. And uh, so I have a, a lot of great memories of playing next to him. Try to make a fair, honest comparison. People think you're hating. Michael Jordan, Scotty Pippen, Dennis Rodman, Tony Kuko, Ron Harper would be better today. They would be better players today, in my opinion. Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Dennis Rodman, Tony Kuko, they would be better. With, no I, hand check with no hand checking. Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Tony I'm, Kuko. I'm just saying that there's no. <laughs> Kuko, it's the pump fake. Wide open. Slash it down. Pretty fake, too. Going oh. and yes. Yeah. It was about a half court when he let that one go. What a great pass. Tony Murray with the block. Oh, blocked by Tony. Gives it back. Tony, long three. Yeah! Yeah! Yeah, two counts! Tony Kukos with a beautiful move. Now he drives past contact and stuffs it home with two hands. Oh, Here's Kukos with a great move. Back to that. Michael. Good night. Michael gives it to Tony Kukos. As Matras, and now he takes it to the hole. <laughs> Today, we have a little global flavor sent in by Tony Kukoc. He can shoot the ball. He got a great hesitation dribble. You fake like you're going, <laughs> Tone, that's a great move, baby. But there's another thing that I like about you, Tone, and it kind of reminds me of myself. One thing you can do is cabbage roll. Oh, Ice, when are you going to let that go? Oh, at least I ain't never letting that go. That's my trademark. You know one thing Ice can do is single roll. Okay. Okay. Starts to back against Scotty Pippen. Look for Miller to pop out. He'll get the screen from Mitchell. Five seconds, four seconds, three. Here he comes. Fade away. Yes, Miller hits a big one. It's not a three. With eight tenths of a second remaining, Reggie Miller takes the bows at the stadium in Chicago. Tony Kukoc comes back in for the Bulls. And there's the delay of game warning. It is a two point. We're going to take a look at is from the Dream Team documentary. Actually, if you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. It's amazing. And it's giving an inside information about Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen's point of view about Tony Kukoc from back in the days. Let's have a look. Krause was recruiting this guy and we're talking how great he was. You know, that's like a, a father who has all his kids and now he sees another kid that he loves more than he loves his own. So we were not playing against Tony Kukoc. We were playing against Jerry Krause in a Croatian uniform. But unfortunately for the real Tony Kukoc, he was now the target of the world's two best defensive players. They were debating who was going to guard him. No, 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 I got it. No, 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 I got it. I'm looking at Michael and Scotty, and they're ready for, like, blood. Like, man. We knew the world was going to be watching. We knew everyone wanted to see what Tony Kukoc was like, and we were going to give him the worst experience he ever had on the basketball court. Pippen drew the initial assignment of shadowing Kukoc and harassed the Croatian from the opening whistle. It was hard to run across the half court without a ball. And, and uh, with the ball, it was just, here, somebody else get it. Tony definitely wasn't getting a shot up, and he wasn't going to score. Kukoc is nothing for four, and he's contributed nothing. We wanted to go guard him on the bench. Kukoc is called for the offensive foul, and the pressure continues. And after Pippen wore Kukoc down, it was Jordan's turn. Kukoc. Stolen by Jordan. He reads it better than anyone. I, I, I understood that part. That the coming here, no, nothing's going to be given to me just because I was... Uh, really good in Europe. So how good was Tony Kukoc in my opinion? Well, I gotta be honest, Tony Kukoc was definitely one of my favorite players from the 1990s and especially from the Chicago Bulls. To me, he's one of the most underrated players. Of course, he was not a great defensive player, but when it comes to being ahead of his time, I mean, a tall player who can pass the ball, who could handle the ball, who could shoot the outside ball. I mean, that's basically what we consider a modern NBA player. What the only difference, in my opinion, was that Tony Kukoc was also clutch 
Kukoc. And especially when we're talking about the mindset of Tony Kukoc, we're talking about an old school mentality player. All right, you guys, that was it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the content. If so, please leave a like and also subscribe to the channel. And I hope I see you next time on the Basketball Time Machine. All right, bye-bye.